So, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, welcome everyone to this week's seminar. It's my great pleasure to introduce my colleague, Chen Ki Su, uh, from University of California, Santa Barbara, UCSB. Um, so, Chen Ki is a condensed matter theorist, which uh, also has done a lot of quantum field theory work. Um, some of his results are even mathematical, so he covers a wide range of topics. Uh, let me just go over his resume. So he's uh, did his bachelor's in China at Tsinghua, and then moved on to Berkeley, where he did his PhD with Joel Moore. And he got that in 2007. After that, he got a prestigious uh, fellowship at Harvard, at the Society of Fellows. So he was there for three years as a junior fellow, and then he got hired by UCSB where he's been uh, since then. And he's now a full professor at UCSB. Uh, Chenke's work spans many things, but so I guess maybe the deepest thing is strongly interacting quantum systems. Um, I think he's a field theorist by, by, by nature, probably the, his strongest weapon. And he has done many interesting results in that direction, including recently uh, dualities between various conformal field theories, CFTs and two plus one spatial uh, space-time dimensions. He has also contributed very interesting results to the study of topological phases, including symmetry predicted topological phases, also non-Fermi liquids, uh, including this, the famous uh, Sage de Vieille-Kitaev model, SYK. Um, and he has won many prizes, I guess too many for me to list now, but maybe I can highlight one of them. In 2019, he received the uh, Simons Investigator Award, which is given to, you know, the most gifted scientists around. So um, quite a career. Uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce to you today, Chenke, and he'll talk about phases and phase transitions with fractal symmetries. Uh, from models to experiments. So Chenke, thanks for coming and the floor is yours. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, William uh, for the nice invitation and also the uh, uh, introduction. Uh, it's my great pleasure uh, to uh, talk about our recent work uh, here. So uh, as, as William mentioned, I will talk about things with uh, fractal symmetries. Uh, so let me first uh, introduce my uh, collaborators. So Nayan and Stephen are uh, uh, graduate students in our department, and Wenjie and Shan are uh, postdocs, and David and Sargar, they are uh, my colleague, fellow faculty members in, uh, in my department, and David uh, in particular is a, a Code Atom experimentalist. Uh, actually, uh, uh, you know, we collaborate on the uh, uh, designing a experiment, well, actually proposing a uh, experimental platform for the physics that I will uh, explain and discuss in this uh, in this talk. Uh, so so in this talk, I will first talk about uh, give a brief review about uh, uh, subsystem symmetry and uh, in particular fractal subsystem symmetry. And actually, I will uh, define something called a fractal order. So fractal order here, uh, uh, the definition is that it's a spontaneous symmetry breaking of the uh, uh, fractal symmetry. Uh, so I, here I follow the uh, definition of the standard uh, order parameter and order in condensed matter systems. So order means a spontaneous breaking of certain symmetry. So here the fractal order is not the same as what people call fracton because fracton has both topological order and a subsystem symmetry. So, so in this talk, I will just uh, talk about the uh, systems with a subsystem symmetry, but these systems will not have topological order. Uh, because I think that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we should uh, probably try to understand one thing first, and the special part of the, of the, of the whole story is the subsystem symmetry. So let's try to uh, discuss the properties of the subsystem symmetry, especially fractal symmetry uh, first. And then I will talk about a, uh, 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 well, a generalization of the fractal symmetry. So I, I will introduce a uh, uh, model and also a series of models with uh, some pretty exotic symmetries called a Pascal triangle symmetry. And a Pascal triangle in China is called a Yanghui triangle. So actually, uh, uh, this actually uh, unifies a, a series of fractal symmetries, which I will uh, discuss. 
And then I will talk about the uh, experimental platform, which I will uh, propose to realize some of the physics here. The experimental platform is the Rydberg atom. So Rydberg atom actually is a, a very popular uh, uh, experimental system, which is actively under study right now. So I will give a quick review of the Rydberg atom. Uh, so I will uh, I will talk eventually talk about how to realize the fractal symmetry and the fractal order with uh, these uh, Rydberg atoms. And these are the two uh, uh, reference uh, related to the to the talk. Okay, uh, so well, I guess I don't have to introduce the fractal in this talk, but, but let me mention it anyway. So fractal is a, a self-similar uh, structure which happens uh, very broadly in nature. So for example, if we stand at a point B, uh, the tree will actually split, stand at point C, split again, a D split again. So basically uh, it's a self-similar uh, structure, it has like a dimension, which is not an integer, it can be a, 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 a fractional or even irrational uh, dimension. So basically tree branches is the most standard uh, uh, example of fractal. So actually in nature, whenever we see a, a, a tree branches like a structure, so likely we can define a, a fractal and a fractal dimension for it. So for example, this is the, uh, uh, so in this picture, they are there are two fractals actually. One is the uh, uh, broccoli. You know, broccoli has a uh, uh, it's, it's a very standard example of a uh, of fractal. But actually, uh, uh, what is less known is that actually the beef steak is also a fractal. You can see the uh, the fat distribution in a beef also follows this kind of a tree branches kind of structure. So uh, one can also uh, maybe define uh, approximately define a Hausdorff dimension for the beef steak. Actually, if you Google, you will find the uh, research papers making connection between the uh, uh, fractal dimension of a beefsteak with its quality and the price. You know, so, uh, well, I haven't checked the theory, but actually it's interesting to, uh, to find out. And uh, another, another example is the human lung. Uh, human lung also have this uh, uh, branches kind of uh, uh, structure. So there's a fractal dimension one can define for the human lung. And also I, I noticed that in the last uh, two years because with COVID, there are also research papers about uh, how our COVID affect uh, human lung fractal dimensions. And also they are, I mean, these are published uh, uh, papers. Uh, but today, so the fractal, which we will uh, uh, talk about a lot is, the, is this, is the Siabinsky triangle. So basically, uh, uh, you know, it's based on a triangle, but it's also self-similar structure of a, uh, triangular uh, shape. So it's a Siabinsky triangle. It has a fractal dimension log three over log two. And also uh, nature, nature never, uh, never uh, disappoint us. There's also some uh, uh, seashell with some, uh, 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 you know, quasi realization of the, uh, of the Siabinsky triangle uh, shapes. Okay, not, not perfect ones, but actually uh, some, some realization of it. Okay. So, uh, okay, so how do we find a fractal structure in condensed matter system with a local Hamiltonian? So it turns out that uh, uh, fractal, uh, fractal structure will emerge in uh, systems with a fractal subsystem symmetry. So fractal subsystem symmetry is a uh, example, it's one example of uh, subsystem symmetry. So let me first talk about some simpler examples of subsystem symmetry. Then we will go to uh, more exotic examples of uh, like a fractal subsystem symmetry. So this actually, this is the model started by my colleague, uh, Leon Balance, Matthew Fisher, and also Arun Paramikanti a uh, long time ago, uh, 20 years ago. Uh, this is probably is the, well, I'm not sure whether the first example, but certainly it's one of the earliest example of uh, uh, models with the subsystem symmetry. So this model describes a boson uh, moving on a uh, square lattice. So n, n is the uh, uh, boson number defined on every side. Phi is the phase angle of the, uh, uh, of the boson creation operator on every side. So basically this term cosine delta xy phi, it describes the following physical process. It describes a ring exchange. So this term describes the uh, uh, boson hopping from this side to this side, and another boson hopping from this side to this side simultaneously. So it's a ring exchange. So ordinary boson hopping will move from one side to its nearest neighbor, but this one involves the uh, two bosons moving on two parallel nearest neighbor links, but along the opposite directions. 
So I, basically, you can see that uh, this kind of a hopping conserves the boson number on every line and, and also every column. So for example, on this line, when there's a one boson arriving on this line, there's another boson departing from this line. And, there, and the same thing uh, for this line and this column. Okay, so it means that uh, this, this model has very large conservation. So basically the boson number of every line and the column they are conserved. So, uh, so it means that this system has a, has a subsystem conservation law. So ordinary boson system only has one U1 conservation law, which is that the boson number on the entire lattice is conserved. But here the boson number on every line is actually conserved. So uh, the motivation for these people to study this model is because although this is a two plus one dimensional model, it has a one dimensional conservation. So this model actually behaves a lot like a one plus one dimensional system. So we know that in one plus one dimensional boson system, uh, there's no superfluid because of the mermin wagner theorem. There's no superfluid in one plus one dimension. And a boson actually can have a quasi long range order and the whole system is described by a, a, a conformal field theory. So because of this uh, a one dimensional subsystem conservation, this uh, two plus one dimensional boson metal phase also does not have any, uh, 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 also does not have a, a super fluid phase. Uh, there's also a, a, a quasi long range order phase. So if we calculate the correlation function between certain operator, it's going to have a, a, a algebraic quasi long range order correlation. So, so, so it means that with this uh, uh, one dimensional subsystem symmetry, uh, this model actually has a, a, a one plus one dimensional properties instead of a two plus one dimensional properties. So let me pause here and see uh, whether there's, uh, there's any questions about, about this model. So the talk will not be uh, uh, about this model, but this is the simplest model about a subsystem symmetry. So let me make sure that uh, uh, we, we actually uh, get the uh, uh, basic idea here. So Chen Ke, the you say it's a Bose metal, a ground yes. state? Right. And so the, there's a Fermi surface associated. Say again, with, sorry. The, there's a Fermi surface that's associated with this, right? In case space. Oh, oh, they, they, they sur surface. Uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't call it a Fermi surface, but, but yeah, but there's a, uh, uh, a line of surface points. Or, surface of a zero energy excitation, you know, in the, in the moment in space. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe that's what you mean by Fermi surface. That's right. And how does it look like? Oh, it's just a line. Uh, it's just a uh, quasi one D. The KS equals zero, KY equals zero. Okay. Yeah, they're just lines. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, another example is this uh, two plus one dimension icing placade model. So this model is a uh, is also defined on the on the square lattice. It looks very much like a transfer field quantum icing model, but actually uh, uh, this is the transfer field term, and this is the uh, uh, placade. Uh, product term between a sigma z on the corners of one unit placate. Okay, so four sigma z's. So this model also has a uh, quasi, I mean, also has a one dimensional conservation. So if I make a product of sigma x along every line and every column of the uh, uh, square lattice, it's going to commute, it's going to commute with the Hamiltonian. So that means that there's an icing uh, conservation on every line and every column. Uh, and because of this, uh, uh, you know, one dimensional conservation law, this two plus one dimensional uh, icing placate model also has a, uh, oh, I mean, also has a lot of uh, similar properties with a, a one plus one dimensional quantum icing model. So for example, uh, there's no, uh, oh, oh, sorry, first of all, for, uh, this model is also self-dual, just like the Kramer's Vanier duality of a one plus one dimensional quantum icing model. Uh, so one plus one dimensional quantum IC model or two dimensional classical IC model, both of them have the same duality, the Kramer's Vanier duality. And this model is a two plus one dimensional quantum model, or we can view it as a three dimensional classical model. It's also self-dual. And under duality, under duality, uh, this uh, placate, uh, placate term becomes a dual transfer field term. And this uh, transfer field sigma x term becomes a product of a four tau z on the corners of the dual placate, okay, on the corner of the dual placate. So now the tau x is defined at the center of the placate 
And actually, uh, uh, tau z is also defined on the center of the, uh, the original plaquette. So it's self-dual. And, uh, and, and also, there's a quantum phase transition at h equals to k. It's a quantum phase transition at h equals k. When k is greater than h, the system is in a ordered phase. The ordered phase spontaneously breaks the uh, subsystem symmetry. Okay, subsystem symmetry, because as I said, the product sigma x is conserved on every line in the column. It means that system has subsystem conservation or subsystem symmetry. And when h is smaller than k, the system will spontaneously break the subsystem symmetry. And when h is greater than k, the system actually preserves all the symmetry. So this also means that when k is greater than h, uh, the system has a lot of a ground state degeneracy. And when h is greater than k, the system has no degeneracy at all. And also, there's no uh, classical phase transition at a finite temperature at all. So it means that uh, this uh, subsystem uh, symmetry order actually will, will be uh, uh, fully restored by any uh, uh, thermal fluctuation. So all these are very similar to a uh, one plus one dimensional quantum icing model because of the subsystem symmetry. Okay, so these subsystem symmetries are usually called a type one subsystem symmetry because actually uh, the conserved charges are defined on a uh, line and a column, they are defined on regular, they are defined on regular subsets uh, of the lattice. Uh, they have integer dimensions. Uh, so in the last, uh, uh, you know, five, 10 years or so, actually there have been a lot of uh, models studying uh, uh, systems with, uh, with uh, uh, subsystem symmetry, but most of these models actually have a, a topological order on top of the uh, uh, subsystem symmetry. Uh, yeah, so there are some review papers about about a fracton. So basically, uh, when the system has a, a, a topological order and and a substance symmetry, this uh, topological order are called a fracton order. So, so this talk we will focus on type two substance symmetry, which means that the the, the conserved charges they are defined on a uh, fractal subset of the lattice. Uh, uh, and the uh, and, and and the subsystem, the fractal subsystem uh, subset of the lattice does not have a uh, integer dimension. It has a fractal dimension. So these are called a type two subsystem symmetry. So a simple model with this kind of a type two subsystem symmetry uh, is this. So I will I will show you the picture in the next slide. So this was first introduced by Newman Moore uh, in 1999 and also by uh, Yoshida uh, in 2013. So this one is called a Siabinsky triangle model. So, uh, so far, this is a classical model, but later on, I will turn on quantum fluctuations. Okay, so how does the, uh, uh, how does the uh, uh, fractal symmetry work? So basically uh, we can see this. So uh, the natural ground state, for, okay. So first of all, this model is a sum over uh, the terms defined on the triangular lattice. It's sum over the terms defined on every down triangle but not up triangle, only the down triangle is summed in this, uh, in this Hamiltonian. And actually on every down triangle, the Hamiltonian has a term which is a product between the three sigma z's on the three vertices or three corners of the down triangle, okay, of the down triangle. So you can see that one obvious ground state of the Hamiltonian is that all the sigma z's pointing up. Okay, so if all sigma z equals to one, is obviously the ground state of the, of the Hamiltonian. But actually, uh, but actually, uh, uh, based on this Hamiltonian, you can see that uh, you can see that uh, uh, this Hamiltonian will will like uh, all sigma z equals to one, or two out of the three sigma z's in every down triangle to be minus one. Okay, so it means that either or plus one, or two minus one and a one plus one in every down triangle. Okay, so because of this uh, uh, peculiar feature, it turns out that uh, the low energy excitation of this Hamiltonian can have this kind of structure. For example, uh, so all the other vertices have a spin sigma z equals to one, but all the sides with a blue dot will have a sigma z equals to minus one. They okay, have sigma z equals to minus one. So you can see that in the, in, uh, so it means, so, so you can see that this is a big triangle, but actually in the interior of the big triangle, all the down triangle have a two minus one and a one plus one. Okay, two minus one and one plus one, or three plus one. So that means that uh, the interior of the big triangle uh, does not cost any energy. Okay, does not cost any energy. The energy cost will only be localized at the corner. Okay, at the corner of the triangle. Okay, 
And this triangle actually has the Sierbinski triangle fractal geometry. If we make a big enough, if we make a big enough, this kind of uh, pattern, it has a Sierbinski triangle kind of, uh, kind of excitation. So this is why this model is actually called a Sierbinski triangle model, okay? Because some fractal, some fractal structure will emerge in, uh, uh, in the uh, low energy uh, uh, excitation. And the excitations are very, very uh, uh, massively degenerate because actually uh, 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 the energy does not depend on how big the Sierbinski triangle is. I can double the size of the uh, uh, Sierbinski triangle. The energy cost will be the same because the energy cost will localize as the three corners of the, of the Sierbinski triangle. Okay, so because of this, and actually then uh, we can try to calculate some correlation function just uh, by computing the partition function of the system to view this as a, a standard stomach problem. And we will see that uh, the, uh, I mean, so the non-zero correlation will be the three-point correlation function, which means that, cor I mean, I calculate uh, the correlation function between sigma z, sigma z, sigma z on, uh, on the three vertices of a triangle. And then actually the correlation actually will decay in this way. So P is a number smaller than one half. So it, it will decay like this. So it means that the uh, fractal dimension, the fractal dimension of the, uh, 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 of the uh, of the Sierbinski triangle will enter will enter the uh, the formula. So this can be calculated exactly. Okay. So basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, right. So basically, uh, uh, suppose we define a system on a, uh, a finite system size. For example, if I define a system for a lattice with size l squared and l equals to uh, two to the power k minus one, then this model will have an explicit symmetry. The entire Hamiltonian is invariant under flipping spins on these sides. Okay, flipping spins on these sides, and you can check that uh, you can check that by flipping spins on these sides, which also form a, uh, a Sierbinski triangle. The entire Hamiltonian actually will be invariant under this kind of uh, spin flipping. But this uh, exact symmetry, this uh, exact fractal symmetry, only happens when the system size L equals to uh, some discrete number, which is two to the power k minus one. Uh, and also, so this is the quantum version of the Sierbinski triangle model now. So basically, uh, uh, just like the quantum icing model, the simplest way to make the uh, model quantum is that we turn on some term which, which, which do not commute with the rest of the Hamiltonian. And the simplest term one can turn on is this one, is the transverse field. So we can see that this term do, no longer commutes with the rest of the rest of the uh, 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 Hamiltonian, and uh, actually for quantum Hamiltonian, we will most be, uh, we will mostly be interested in the uh, uh, in the ground state, okay, in the ground state of the of the Hamiltonian, and for the quantum Hamiltonian, there is a, a specific way of defining the uh, 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 conservation law and also the uh, uh, symmetry is that we try to identify what is the operator which uh, commute with the Hamiltonian, then again. For the quantum version of the uh, Sierbinski triangle model, suppose we define the model on a lattice with the size L square and L equals to two to the power K minus one. Then actually there's an operator uh, which commute with the Hamiltonian and this operator is a product of Sigma X on all these uh, blue dots, okay? Which also is a uh, Sierbinski triangle uh, shape. Then uh, this product will commute with the entire, entire Hamiltonian. Okay, so it means that uh, this Hamiltonian defined on this uh, uh, system size will have a conservation, a uh, conserved charge, which is defined on the subsystem and the subsystem is a Sierbinski triangle. So it means that this Hamiltonian has a type two uh, subsystem symmetry as I, as I defined before. Okay, so let me make a quick comment. Let me make a quick comment. Is that a subsystem symmetry in many ways, actually they behave like some, uh, something in between, it behaves like a, a symmetry between the zero dimensional, uh, sorry, a zero form symmetry and also a higher form symmetry. So we know that zero form symmetry means that uh, the conserved charge is defined on the entire, entire space, entire D dimensional space. But uh, for a higher form symmetry, like a one form symmetry, the conserved charge defined on, it defined as the flux penetrating a lower dimensional submanifold. Of the of, of the system, for example, for the uh, for the Z two one form symmetry, it means that a conserved charge is the Z two electric flux through any closed surface in, for example, two dimensions. Suppose we consider a two dimensional system with a, a Z two one form symmetry, it means that uh, there is a, a Z two electric flux 
through any one-dimensional closed surface, and this uh, uh, flux will be conserved. Uh, but for fractal symmetry or substance symmetry, something in between. So basically, uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the substance symmetry, the subsystem will still have to be infinite. It cannot be a, a finite uh, volume uh, subsystem. It still has to be infinite. But actually, uh, the uh, uh, dimension, the dimension of the subsystem where the uh, uh, where the uh, uh, conserved charge defined is actually smaller than the entire in, than the entire uh, system system uh, dimension. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me continue to discuss this uh, this uh, uh, quantum Sierpinski triangle model. So it turns out that uh, this quantum Sierpinski triangle model, uh, just like the quantum icing model, and also like the uh, uh, icing plaquette model, which I introduced before, this model is also self-dual. So we have seen a lot of a duality here. So this self-duality, as far as I know, was actually uh, pointed out in this uh, reference last year. So uh, it means that uh, uh, this model is also self-duality, uh, and the self-duality will exchange K and H. So we can so uh, so uh, this uh, uh, down triangle have three vertices, and we have sigma z and a sigma x defined on the vertices of the down triangle. But we can also define a dual up triangle. Okay, the dual up triangle. So we can define the dual variable on the uh, dual. Uh, dual site, which actually resides on the center of the down triangle, then uh, this sigma x will become the product of tau z on the three vertices, okay, on the three vertices, and this uh, uh, sigma z product will become the tau x on the center of the down triangle, okay? So under this uh, exact duality mapping, we're going to see that uh, this uh, quantum Sierpinski triangle model will actually uh, switch k and h just like the uh, quantum icing model and quantum plaquette model. OK, then it means that there's likely a quantum phase transition at h equals to k when k is greater than h. Uh, when the k is greater than h, there's a spontaneous breaking of the fractal symmetry. OK, the system will have a lot of degeneracy. So the degeneracy will correspond to spontaneous breaking of the uh, 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 fractal subsystem symmetry. Uh, and also the expression value of sigma z in this uh, in the phase with the k, k greater than h is going to be uh, zero. And when h is greater than k, the system will be in a disordered phase with a non-degenerate ground state. And also the uh, uh, expression value of sigma z will be zero in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, in the quantum disordered phase. Okay, in the quantum disordered phase. Uh, so that means that uh, uh, the quantum phase transition at h equals to k will be a uh, order disorder phase transition of the uh, of the fractal subsystem symmetry. So we can call the k greater than h a uh, fractal order because it spontaneously break the uh, fractal symmetry, and we can call the uh, uh, h greater than k phase a uh, 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 subsystem symmetry symmetric phase because there's no spontaneous symmetry breaking. Of course, we want to know what is the nature of the quantum phase transition at h equals to k. Okay, this is uh, going to be a very interesting question and also going to be a very hard question. Okay, also going to be a very hard question. So normally when we study a phase transition, we study, I mean, we have a field theory analysis for the phase transition, at least for the uh, uh, zero form symmetry. There's a field, uh, uh, the field theory analysis and we can do RG analysis and we can find a fixed point. Okay, we can find a fixed point and we can calculate a lot of universal quantities as the uh, phase transition. But for this kind of fractal subsystem symmetry system, okay, actually uh, uh, we don't really, I mean, at least I don't know any uh, well-established RG analysis or RG uh, uh, formula for this kind of uh, uh, phase transition. So we have to rely on some numerics. So there's some early, earlier numerics which shows that this is a first order transition. Uh, if it's a first order transition, it's gonna be less interesting uh, at h equals k. But actually, the most recent, uh, uh, the most interesting, uh, sorry, the most recent uh, 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 numerics pointed out a uh, um, uh, interesting, a more interesting uh, possibility, which is that it's a uh, uh, continuous phase transition at h equals k. And not only that, they also calculate the uh, uh, sigma x sigma s correlation function as the critical point. They find that the, uh, it also decays with the power given by the fractal uh, dimension of the uh, Sierpinski triangle, okay, given by the uh, uh, Sierpinski triangle. 
So if it's true, well, of course, I think I think the community will will try to uh, test this uh, the, the the nature of the quantum phase transition over and over again, just to be sure that uh, it's a second order phase transition. But I'm trying to but but I'm trying to say that if this is correct, it's going to be a very uh, a very interesting uh, a very interesting uh, uh, result that actually the uh, uh, it's a it's a uh, uh, continuous. Uh, phase transition between a fractal order and a disordered phase, and also the scaling dimension has a, a fractal uh, number. Okay, so how do we study? How do we study this kind of phase transition? Well, actually, uh, uh, basically, uh, suppose we uh, suppose we have like a system with Ising symmetry or like a Zn symmetry. The uh, basically the standard way, the first step what people can try is try to embed the system into a system with a U1 symmetry and see what you can get there. Okay, this is how we study, for example, the one plus one dimensional VN clock model or two dimensional classical clock model. So basically, uh, uh, basically this model, I mean, this paper also uh, uh, made some attempt to try, try this approach. And we also, uh, we also tried this, we also tried to uh, study a uh, U1 generalization of the Sierbinsky triangle model. And we found something, uh, uh, I mean, well, although I can say that we, uh, we have understood this uh, 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 phase transition in the uh, in the icing case yet, but actually we find something uh, quite amusing in this uh, in this uh, U1 in this uh, U1 uh, generalization of the Sierbinsky triangle model. Turns out that uh, suppose we just write down a model which is natural U1 generalization of the Sierbinsky triangle model, it has a lot more symmetry. There's some um, a much more generalized uh, uh, fractal symmetry, a lot more fractal symmetry than the Sierbinsky triangle model itself. So, which I will introduce, uh, which I will explain uh, here. So, for example, the uh, uh, Sierbinsky triangle model is a product of sigma z on the three vertices of a down triangle, and we sum over the uh, all the down triangles. So here, we define a u1 phase angle theta on every vertices of the entire triangle lattice, and we write down cosine theta one plus theta two plus theta three, and we sum over all the down triangles. Okay, this is the most natural, this is the most natural U1 uh, generalization of the Sierbinsky triangle model. But turns out then you can see that this model has some very peculiar symmetry. So for example, as long as we make sure the sum over theta is invariant, then actually we can do some uh, arbitrary rotation with theta of the entire lattice. So for example, suppose I rotate this angle, I mean this point by angle alpha, and this point of angle minus alpha, this point of angle minus alpha, this point of angle plus two, uh, two, uh, plus two alpha, and a plus one alpha, minus three alpha, minus three alpha, then you can see that uh, all these down triangles, they are going to remain invariant. Okay, for example, this triangle have plus one, plus two, minus three, plus two, plus one, minus three. Okay, so it keeps going. Okay, this triangle keeps going. So you can immediately notice now suppose we ignore the sign, okay? So this actually is a Pascal triangle, okay? One minus one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, okay? And in China, it's called a Yanghui uh, triangle. It's in a very ancient Chinese book, okay? Okay, so it means that for the U1 generalization of Sierbinsky triangle model, it actually has some even more uh, uh, interesting, uh, even more peculiar uh, symmetry, which is called a Pascal triangle. And it turns out that suppose we, Suppose we actually, uh, uh, you know, break the U1 symmetry down to Zn symmetry, or let's me call it a Zp symmetry and a P, let me make it a uh, uh, prime number, you make it a prime number, then the Pascal triangle symmetry will reduce to a fractal symmetry. So for example, if I take the Pascal triangle and I remove all the even numbers, okay, remove all the even numbers, then the remaining structure, Become say a Sierbinsky triangle, okay? Become a Sierbinsky triangle, okay? And suppose I take this uh, 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 Pascal triangle. I remember, uh, sorry, I remove all the multiple of three, okay? Remove all the multiple of three. I would get another fractal, okay? So it means that for a, for a ZP model, for 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 a model with a ZP symmetry, then the ZP generalization of Sierbinsky triangle model each has its own different fractal symmetry. Okay, each has its own different fractal symmetry. And the fractal will have, will have uh, this, uh, 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 this dimension. Okay, we have this dimension. You can see that when P equals two, this is just a Sierbinsky triangle. Okay, log three over log two. 
Okay, so that means actually the U1 model actually uh, unifies a lot of uh, fractal symmetries. So all the fractal symmetries of the of the ZP uh, version of the Stiebinski triangle model can be unified, can be generated from the from the parent U1 model, okay, from the parent U1 model, and we can also calculate the uh, the, the three point correlation function of the ZP model and some version of the ZP model have some a very nice uh, correlation function where the uh, Hausdorff dimension of the fractal uh, will also enter the uh, three point correlation function and the uh, uh, DH the, the Hausdorff dimension given by this, uh, this formula. So let me first try to understand the, uh, uh, the quantum phase diagram of the U1 parent, okay, U1 parent Pascal triangle model. So basically, basically, actually, uh, the reason we want to understand this is because actually, uh, uh, this is pretty much the uh, uh, this is pretty much the uh, uh, kind of like a standard procedure of starting a ZN model. Uh, is that we uh, embed the ZN to U1, and then we study the quantum phase trying sorry the quantum phase diagram of the U1 uh, of the U1 uh, 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 model, and see whether the ZN symmetry breaking will lead to any uh, new physics or not. So, uh, so, so this part is a little bit technical. If it is a little bit technical, so let me try to just uh, uh, briefly, uh, uh, briefly explain our results. So basically, uh, we want to ask, we want to ask whether there's a phase transition or not uh, when we turn on this kind of, uh, well, I mean, when when we consider this kind of a uh, quantum U1 Pascal triangle model. So now this Hamiltonian has uh, two terms. The term number one. Is a, a cosine uh, theta plus theta plus theta term, which I uh, defined before. The term number two is a on-site Hubbard interaction. So this model is a generalization of the Bose Hubbard model. So basically, we want to ask whether they say a quantum phase transition by tuning u over t. Okay, by tuning u over t. So to study this, basically, uh, uh, the standard procedure we we uh, we actually uh, uh, assume is that uh, we expand the cosine. To the quadratic order uh, by assuming the u equals to zero, and then we uh, then we actually uh, uh, analyze whether we are allowed to do this expansion or not. So, for example, if we are in a superfluid phase with a spontaneous symmetry breaking, we are allowed to expand the cosine at its uh, at its minimum, and then uh, this expansion will be stable against uh, the u term, the Hubbard u term, okay, uh, against the Hubbard u term. So, uh, so this analysis will need to go to the dual formula in the game. So basically, uh, uh, we go to the dual uh, dual model of this U1 model, and we analyze the, whether the uh, uh, whether the uh, uh, semi-classical order by expanding the cosine term is going to be stable or not. So, uh, so basically, basically our conclusion is that actually the semi-classical order is going to be destroyed even by weak quantum fluctuation U. It means that suppose I turn on this, I mean, suppose we have this model and turn on the U term, then the system actually only has one phase. And this one phase is just the quantum disorder phase. So basically uh, this model does not really have a uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking order of the uh, U1 quantum Pascal, uh, 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 Pascal uh, uh, subsystem symmetry. Okay, so the whole model actually will just be in one quantum disorder phase. So this means that uh, suppose we want to use this U1 model to analyze the ZN, Version of the uh, 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 Stiebinski triangle model. Actually, uh, uh, actually, uh, we have to be very careful. Uh, not only does the U1 quantum Pascal triangle model have a lot of uh, 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 more peculiar subsystem symmetries, like a Pascal triangle subsystem symmetry, uh, it also uh, it, it also has no quantum phase transition. Okay, the U term will destroy the semi-classical uh, semi-classical order. Okay, uh, uh, based on our analysis. Uh, but I also want to point out that actually, although this, uh, this model does not have a semi-classical order or quasi long range order, uh, there is a fine tune, a multi-critical point, like the Ruxa kivelson point of the quantum diamond model. I mean, uh, as the fine tune, the quantum critical point, actually there is a, uh, I mean, uh, the system is gapless. And that gapless point actually has some, uh, I mean, it's a gapless point with, uh, uh, with a, uh, uh, Pascal triangle fractal symmetry. So, so that gap in point actually may be worth uh, more studying uh, in the future. But actually we haven't done a lot of study based on that point yet. I did point out that I believe that point exists. Okay, that, uh, that point exists. Just, uh, uh, I mean, that point may serve as a starting point for us to understand conformal field theory. Or maybe I shouldn't use the word conformal field theory, but, but actually we can, uh, we can, I mean, that, that, that point may serve as a starting point uh, of the studying of a, uh, uh, of a gapless system with uh, fractal symmetries.
Yeah, so for example, I mean, an open question and also a very interesting question to ask is that is the uh, field theory or more generally a low energy effective field theory, sorry, low energy effective theory with a fractal symmetry. So for ordinary icing model and ordinary uh, other quantum phase transition, we know that we don't have to use all the microscopic degree of freedom to describe the system as a phase transition. We can co-screen the system. We can remove a lot of our, uh, 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 UV physics. We can remove a lot of high energy mode. We only look at the uh, a uh, part of the uh, 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 spectrum of the system. And we can get a pretty nice description of the system uh, based on part of the degree of freedom of the system, not the entire spectrum, okay? So for, for systems with a fractal symmetry, this is much harder, but not impossible, okay? But not impossible. So for example, for type one model, this actually is a partially successful. So for example, in this uh, uh, two plus one dimensional both both metal uh, model, which I introduced before, which was first started by Perry Candy, Balance, and Fisher. This is the lattice model. This model has a, uh, a subsystem symmetry. And actually, yeah, they proposed a, a, a low energy effective field theory, which looked like this, okay, which looked like this. You can see that this model also has some uh, subsystem symmetry because actually this phi always comes with a partial x and partial y. It means that suppose you add phi, so if, if you transform phi, by adding it as by a function of x or a function of y, uh, this, this Lagrangian will be invariant, okay? So this model has, I mean, this field theory also has a subsystem symmetry, okay? Also has a subsystem symmetry. So it means that uh, there is a low energy effective theory which captures a lot of the physics of uh, this lattice model, okay? Of, of this lattice model. So now the open question, uh, which, I, uh, which I really want to ask, but I don't have an answer yet, is that whether there is a uh, low energy effective theory for this uh, U1 model, but uh, still has this uh, uh, Pascal triangle, uh, Pascal triangle kind of fractal symmetry or not? Okay, this is the question which I would like, uh, which I would like to ask, but I don't have the answer. But this is something which I think is very much worth uh, uh, studying. Okay, so uh, yeah, so before I before I move on, I mean before I move on to the next section, which is the experimental proposal to realize the physics. So I'm gonna pause here to see whether uh, there's any question about, about, about what I've talked about so far. Yeah, I have questions, but, that, but I'll keep them for the end. Okay, 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 cool. So uh, yeah, okay, so it's taking a bit, bit longer than I thought, but okay, so let me, let me, uh, let me just uh, uh, give a brief review of uh, uh, something called a Riedberg atom. So Riedberg atom basically is an it's a excited state of an atom. Okay, it's, it's an excited state of an atom. It looks very much like a hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom has a core, has a very, very small uh, uh, nucleus in the center, and there's one electron orbiting around it. And actually for the hydrogen, uh, for, for, for the Riedberg atom, for the Riedberg atom, actually uh, it's just basically, uh, there's still a core, but the core has a finite size, but the people can excite the most uh, uh, exterior electron to a very high principal quantum number. And we know when an electron has a very high principal quantum number, uh, the radius of the electron orbit is very, very large. So that means that the Riedberg atom is actually very big, it's very big, has a very big radius, and there's one electron orbiting around the core, and this uh, one electron actually is very far from the core. So the Riedberg atom looks very similar to a hydrogen atom in this sense. And because of the similar structure, the uh, spectrum of the uh, Riedberg atom is also very similar. So we know the hydrogen atom has a simple uh, spectrum, which is the uh, minus one over n squared. For the Riedberg atom, the spectrum is, is almost one over uh, n squared, but it's one over n minus some shifting uh, squared. This shifting is because of the finite size of the core, finite size of the core. So the Riedberg atom has attracted a lot of interest in uh, uh, quantum simulation in experimenting in recent years. The reason is that actually, uh, first of all, uh, you know, people can do very, very uh, uh, um, high precision manipulation of the river atom. And another reason is that uh, this uh, river atom actually they interact with each other very, very strongly. So the interaction between two river atoms actually uh, uh, takes a form like this, one over r to the power six, okay, one, to one over r to the power six. And then this uh, interaction actually arises from dipole-dipole interaction, arises from dipole-dipole interaction, the Van der Waals interaction. And actually C, the coefficient C, scales very strongly 
with a principal quantum number. So it means actually the interaction between uh, these atoms can be very strong. It can be very strong. Okay, so how do we use a Rydberg atom to actually uh, simulate a quantum system? Well, actually, uh, people actually can define a, uh, another quantum number, which is n hat. I mean, this n hat is not the same as the principal quantum number. It's another quantum number, n hat. So people say that and people define n hat equals to zero. This equals to the ground state of the Rydberg atom and n hat equals to one equals to the excited state of the Rydberg atom. So it means that we can call, so when, uh, when this electron is not excited, it's the ground state corresponds n hat equals zero. And when this, uh, uh, when this electron is at its uh, Rydberg orbital, uh, this, uh, uh, this atom is co uh, correspond n hat equals to one. Then people can drive the system with a uh, photon, can drive the system with a photon with the energy very close to uh, the energy, the excited energy of the river atom, then I can drive an oscillation between n equals zero and, and, and n equals to one. And then this oscillation correspond to a term in the Hamiltonian, which look like this, okay? Which look like this. So they say Hamiltonian H naught uh, correspond to a, a, uh, the Van der Waals interaction and n hat equals zero and one. And also the sigma X term, which correspond to Rabi oscillation, the, uh, the, the resonance, the resonating process, the Rabi oscillation between the n hat equals zero and n hat equals to one. So by looking at this Hamiltonian, you can already see that this Hamiltonian can simulate, can potentially simulate a lot of system which, can, uh, which is described by uh, icing variables, they have quantum icing variables. And they say a very good review article on river atoms by these people. And I, uh, I personally learn a lot from this review article. Okay, so what has been done in, uh, uh, in recent years in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, 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 river atom. So there has been uh, 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 proposals in theory and also experiments uh, using uh, river atoms to simulate a Z2 quantum spin liquid. Okay, so basically uh, uh, they trap the river atoms on, the, uh, on, uh, on a Kagome lattice, uh, on a Kagome lattice, uh, which is also a link of a triangular lattice. And actually the uh, strong interaction, the strong repulsion between different river atoms will guarantee that uh, uh, every, uh, every hexagon of the Kagome lattice has one and only one atom excited to a river state. And then, uh, uh, you know, then this kind of a Rydberg state uh, configuration can be mapped one-to-one -to, -one to the uh, quantum diamond model, can be mapped one-to-one -to, -one to the quantum diamond model on the triangular lattice. And actually it is well known that the quantum diamond model on the triangular lattice actually has a, a Z2 topological order state, okay, it has a Z2 topological order state. So basically uh, uh, these uh, theory papers and this uh, experiment shows that this system can actually uh, uh, simulate a, a Z2 topological order. Okay, I will skip this slide. Okay, so now let me discuss how do we use the Rydberg atom to simulate to uh, realize the quantum stability triangle model. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, basically, uh, uh, this the uh, H term actually naturally comes from the uh, Rabi oscillation. Okay, this H term naturally comes from this uh, Rabi oscillation term here. So basically, we have to uh, design a term which which actually uh, effectively give us this uh, sigma v sigma v sigma v term. Uh, this actually looks very tough because uh, this is a, a three body interaction, but in any condensed matter system, uh, the two body interaction will be dominating. Okay, will be dominating. So does the Van der Waals interaction. The Van der Waals interaction is also a two body interaction. So now the question becomes, how do we use a two body interaction to simulate a three body interaction? Okay, so it turns out that there's a trick. Okay, there's a trick that one can do it. So our target atoms, our target atoms are located on the vertices of the triangular lattice. Okay, so we trap the Rydberg atom on the vertices of the triangular lattice, but we also trap uh, one uh, auxiliary atom, another, uh, another uh, atom at the center of every down triangle. Okay, at the center of every down triangle. So all these atoms will interact with each other. So there will be nearest neighbor interaction between different river atoms. And also there will be repulsion between the uh, uh, target atom and also auxiliary atom. So there will be V, uh, okay. So there will be some uh, interaction like that. So let's, uh, uh, let's try to choose the, uh, let, let's choose the atoms and the principal quantum numbers wisely 
So actually we can realize this kind of Hamiltonian. So this Hamiltonian, when you expand it, it will only have, it will only have, uh, it will only have a, a nearest neighbor, it will only have a nearest neighbor repulsion between, uh, uh, between the atoms. There will be no free body interaction, okay? However, the ground state of this Hamiltonian can be one to one map to the ground state of the uh, uh, Stierbinski triangle Hamiltonian. So for example, how do we make this uh, ground state of this Hamiltonian? So we just want the uh, sum within the square to be zero, okay? Make the sum within the square of the V term to be zero. And to make this happen, there are two possible ways to make this happen. One, we can just make NA equals to one, and, the, and, and NT and the three NTs, the target atoms equals to zero, or we can make the NA equals zero and a two out of the three NTs equals to one. Okay, two out of three NTs equals to one. Okay, so we can either make this equals to one and all these are zero, or we can make NA equals zero and a two out of the three NTs equals to one. So all these are ground states. So it turns out that this ground state map precisely to the ground state of the Stierbinski triangle model. So basically yeah, these states correspond to the three sigma z equals to one, and these states correspond to two out of three sigma z equals to minus one. Okay, so it turns out that uh, uh, the ground state of this Hamiltonian map to precisely to the ground state of the Stierbinski triangle model. Okay, so it turns out that not only there's a one-to-one -one precise mapping between the ground state of the two Hamiltonians. Turns out that the, the uh, uh, excited states of the CFNT triangle model also precisely map to the excited states uh, of the, uh, of the, I mean, of this Hamiltonian, okay, of, uh, of this Hamiltonian. So we can have a table of how the mapping works. We can have a table of how, of how the mapping works. Uh, the only penalty of, of this Hamiltonian is that uh, this Hamiltonian has a larger Hilbert space. So it means that uh, in addition, to realizing the ground state and the first excited states of the Stierbinski triangle model is also realize some extra states. Well, with the energy gap between the, uh, uh, with, with, with the energy gap uh, from, from, from all the other states. Okay, so basically the trick is that we can enlarge the Hilbert space, then we can realize, then we can simulate the three body interactions by, uh, by two body interaction only. So as I said, we can expand this term and we get uh, Hamiltonian with only two body interactions. And then actually we can simulate a lot of physics. We can simulate a lot of physics using the Rydberg atom. Okay, so for example, we can, uh, we can start with a state with all the atom uh, quantum number n equals to zero or correspond to sigma z equals to, equals to one. And then we can slowly, we can slowly turn on the chemical potential of the n on the three corners. It means that we turn on the Z-man field on the three corners of the triangle. And we, we actually polarize the three spins, then actually, uh, uh, then adiabatically, we should see the emerging of the Sierbinski triangle structure. Okay, we should see the Sierbinski triangle structure emerging in the experiment. Supposed to be, uh, do the experiment slowly in the, uh, uh, in the uh, experimental setup. Okay, in the experimental setup. And also, experimentally, we should, uh, we should also be able to measure the, uh, uh, measure the uh, uh, three body correlation function, a three point correlation function experimentally. Okay, we can just uh, make uh, many, many measurements of the three point correlation and uh, make an average, make an average of all the measurements. We can make an average of all the measurements. So eventually we should get, we should get the uh, uh, correlation function. Okay, sigma, sigma, sigma correlation function. Okay, and then uh, this uh, Rabi, uh, Rabi frequency, sorry, the Rabi oscillation term will act naturally as a transfer field, and this term can drive a quantum phase transition. It can drive a quantum phase transition uh, between the uh, uh, fractal order state and a fractal disorder state. Okay. Okay. So uh, the comment, uh, the comment. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, basically, uh, uh, right. So I mentioned that. So I mentioned that uh, uh, there are some extra states. There's an extra states. Okay. Realized, realized by uh, by this model. So basically, I uh, suppose I drive a quantum phase transition of the Sierbinski triangle model. We are not really sure what is the effect of these states, okay? Because actually we don't really have a well-established, uh, we don't really have a well-established RG process or RG formalism for uh, to analyze the effect of these states. But actually, these sorry, but these states may not play a role uh, as the quantum phase transition. The reason is that uh, 
Suppose I started with suppose I started with the uh, U1 Wilson Fisher fixed point. I started with a Wilson Fisher fixed point with the U1 symmetry. We know very well that suppose I break the U1 symmetry down to the Zn, the Zn anisotropy actually is irrelevant when n is greater or equals to four. So that means actually even if we are uh, uh, we we start with a system without the exact symmetry, the symmetry breaking may not be relevant at the quantum phase transition. Uh, but actually, uh, uh, since actually we don't really have a well-established theoretical formalism for this uh, uh, for this uh, uh, statement uh, here, we don't really know this for sure. But having an experimental uh, having an experimental uh, realization will certainly help us uh, understand this question and help us establish a future theoretical formalism, a future theoretical formalism for this uh, uh, for this uh, uh, phase transition involving fractal symmetry. So we can also try to realize. Uh, higher dimensional type two uh, subsystem symmetry with a fractal structure using a similar trick. So for example, this is a, a three dimensional CF basic triangle model. It's on a, uh, it's on a layered triangular lattice and actually uh, it's defined as a product of sigma Z on every tetrahedron. And then we sum over all the tetrahedron. So this is a four body interaction, but again, we can actually simulate this uh, four body interaction with only two body interaction of the river atoms. Uh, we can do this by decorating the lattice with one extra atom as the center of every tetrahedron. It means that this actually becomes a diamond lattice. Okay, this becomes a diamond lattice. And then uh, suppose we, uh, uh, we, we, we actually uh, uh, localize, uh, we, trap, we trap the uh, river atoms on the, uh, on the diamond lattice. Uh, by tuning the interaction, by tuning the principal quantum number, we can actually realize this uh, uh, multi-body, four-body interaction with uh, uh, with only two body van der Waals uh, interactions. Okay, and this model also have a uh, fractal structure emerging. Okay, so this is summary. Okay, this is summary. So basically uh, uh, we introduced uh, a fractal symmetry and also fractal models, uh, both classical and all the quantum fractal models. Uh, we, we, we said that some of the fractal models actually have a, a, a order disorder phase transition between a, a fractal symmetry spontaneous breaking phase and also a ordered phase. And also we discussed a, a U1 parent model and a U1 parent model has a, a, a Pascal triangle symmetry. And this symmetry is a parent symmetry of many uh, different uh, uh, fractal symmetries and each for one of the ZP or ZN uh, generalization of the Sierbinski triangle model. And we also discussed the realization of the quantum Sierbinski triangle model uh, with the rhythm atoms which only has a two body interaction and we can simulate the uh, three body interaction with it by enlarging the field of space. And actually uh, uh, this is the other funding agencies uh, funding both my group and also, uh, and also David Wells group. Okay, so that's the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Chenke, for a very nice talk. So now it's open to questions. So let me ask the audience if anyone has any questions. Please uh, raise your hand or speak up. Oh, so uh, Rafas, please. Thank you for the very nice talk. I just had a question on the uh, Sierpinski Hausdorff dimension. So, is it well defined? If you are you allowed to take p equals to one in that case? P equals to one. Uh, well, not in this model. I mean, ma mathematically, I don't know. Actually, sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't know whether it makes sense to take p equals to one. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, based on the simple formula, certainly, uh, if I take p equals to one, the uh, Hausdorff dimension is is not it's, it's not going to be well defined. So, my you guess get three halves if you expand the logs about p equals one. So yeah, you have a you know some uh, featureless. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The log certainly does not work when p equals to one, but I'm not sure whether there's any uh, trick to define it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, so so theoretically, actually, uh, in statistical mechanics, people uh, people take like a O n uh, or Z n model, some uh, pass model, and then take n equals to one. And uh, naively, that does not look. Uh, I mean, does not look like it makes sense. But actually, uh, uh, still, that has some useful. Uh, results so maybe there's some trick of taking people's one here as well i mean yeah that's that's a very interesting I, I i don't know okay thank you very much so do we have any other questions i have a question because i don't okay. see other questions um so can you go back to the slide where you were discussing the rk so you say that there exists rk point or you you conjecture that there is 
Oh yeah, actually, actually, uh, yeah, they exist. Just uh, we have to fine tune more than one parameters, you know. So for the uh, for the well, actually, for for the original quantum diamond model, one has to fine tune more than one parameter. Actually, uh, here it's the same. Actually, we have to fine tune more than I mean, even more parameters. I think, uh, but there there is one. There is a uh, multi-critical point based on the uh, uh, based on based on the analysis, which I didn't really uh, spell out. It's a bit technical, but actually, uh. uh Right, I mean, it's basically going to be a z equals to two, which means that the dispersion is, is, is not going to be linear. Uh, yeah. Uh, but so you, right. you know it's z equal to two from, from how do you know? Oh yeah, so so it's basically, it's, it's, it's basically the, the similar analysis of RK point. So for, for the RK point, uh, you start with the quantum diamond model. It's a compact U1 gauge field to go to a dual picture. It's a z equals two. A boson, and then you show that uh, only only when z equals two, this uh, vertex operator will be irrelevant. I mean, can be irrelevant. It's the same thing here. I mean, the dual theory will have a uh, it's a two component boson, and they are a bunch of a vertex operator. And you also you can also show that only when z equals two can the vertex operator be irrelevant. But to get to that point, we have to find two more parameters. I see. So you get also z equal two. Yeah. Right. But the difference is that the kinetic term. Is not isotropic, right? Or compared to the usual oh, they, low energy. So first of all, there are, there are two components of the boson instead of one, and the vertex vertex operator is more complex. Sorry, it's more complicated because there's a combination between the two uh, vertex operators, and they appear to be more relevant. Uh, but the Lagrangian, it's it's a Gaussian theory, right? It's a Gaussian theory. Yeah. So so basically, basically that uh, multi grid point in the the, the, the dual of the multi grid point actually has a Gaussian. It's a Gaussian theory with z equals two. But with the gradients that are anisotropic, right? You have like dx dy or acting oh, on yeah, the... right. But but does that matter so much though? Uh, yeah, I, I I'm not sure whether anisotropy matters so much though. Actually, yeah, maybe yeah, right. You you you're right. There there, there are some anisotropy terms, but actually in terms of power counting, maybe maybe they don't matter that much. Maybe they. I mean, okay. So so maybe yeah. So so they may be marginal. Marginal relevance, so that means that we have to tune them to be zero as well, maybe eventually, you know. But uh, it's, it's going to be a highly fine-tuned uh, model grid point anyway. Yeah, but but, mm. but yeah, but you are right. Actually, in the uh, in the original quantum diamond model, this uh, uh, they are they are uh, higher derivatives, which actually also need to be tuned to zero. So that's that's why the original RK point is also very fine-tuned. And here, like these um, these phases that, for example, have this spontaneous broken fractal symmetry, um, are they ultimately fine-tuned? Or if you add, you know, like if you take these Ising models you discussed earlier and you add just like the two-body Ising term or, you know, yeah, any terms so, you want. So if you, if you add a two-body Ising term, they will be relevant in the, in the uh, fractal order phase, but we don't know whether they're gonna be relevant or not as the quantum phase transition. It's like it, it's like if you if you take a Z four anisotropy as the U one Wilson Fisher fixed point, they will it, it will be relevant in the ordered phase, but it's irrelevant as the quantum phase transition. So there we know for sure. Just here we we don't. I mean, you know, uh, we need to we, we need to have some perturbative analysis of uh, I mean some perturbative RG formalism developed, you know, for the fractal uh, symmetry uh, fixed point and see whether the symmetry breaking terms are going to be relevant or not. Yeah, but that's that's an excellent question. I mean, I, yeah, I should have mentioned that uh, in you know in my talk as well. And so that's open right now because you're saying yeah, that the that's usual. Totally open. That's totally open. Yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot of mysteries which are not uh, resolved yet. And what's what's your favorite open question in everything that you mentioned? Uh... Well, I mean, so for example, the the uh, yeah, my favorite question. So basically. Uh, you know, so right now it's it's this one, right? So uh, so so this is a lattice model. It has uh, uh, some weird symmetry. So is there a uh, low energy effective theory, which do not involve all the lattice degree freedom, but still have this uh, still have this uh, uh, you know uh, weird symmetry or not? Then uh, so 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 if we have that, we can start, and so the, we can view that as a low energy effective theory or a field theory, and we can start with that and start with our 
analysis, like like how we study all the uh, quantum phase transitions. Yeah, that I mean that will be step one of understanding these uh, phase transitions. You know, like uh, like uh, this model here, this model here. Uh, I mean, a lot of a, lo a lot of understanding actually was achieved by starting with uh, this Lagrange. Yeah, which by the way, I think people have been studying this also recently. I think Cyberg and company for uh, the the fractonic properties of this Lagrangian. Uh, when phi is compact um yes i i i think that i mean i yeah i think i think i think i think the original paper has already done a lot of those uh, i mean done a lot of those studies along that line yeah. and so certainly they didn't ignore the compactness i mean they turned on the compactness in, the, in, in their paper already I, see. I don't know about this reference so it's, it's pretty nice work <laughs> from 2000 20 years ago <laughs> yeah 20 years ago yeah right you know Cool. So let me see if there are other questions. I want to hijack all the time. Okay, so it seems like there are no further questions. So let us all thank Chenke for a very nice talk. Yeah, thank you.